Hello everyone, this is Brian Kibler, and I've got in my hands Graveborn, the newest in the Wizards of the Coast premium deck series. So uh, this is a, a new product designed by David Humphreys, who has done pretty well with some decks like this before, so I'm pretty excited to see what's inside. So let's go. So let's check this out. So you can already see the, uh, the sweet rares in the front here. I gotta figure out how to open this. All right, here we go. Sweet rares in the front here, starting with Avatar of Woe. Avatar of Woe, right here. I got him out. It's complicated. Oh my god. <laughs> they flew everywhere. Avatar of Woe. Avatar of Woe is uh, one of the, the, the fatties of history. It's uh, the, the even bigger than Visara. Kind of sweet. What else we got here? Cabal Therapy. The foil Cabal Therapy is pretty awesome. This is one of the, the best discard spells of all time. It's particularly good in, uh, in a reanimator deck because you can, uh, you can Cabal Therapy yourself and get your fatty into the graveyard. A fatty like Croesus the Purger. Crows of the Purger, I am uh, not surprised to see in this deck here. This was uh, one of the key fatties in the reanimation deck uh, called Benzo that uh, David Humphreys, along with other uh, Team YMG members, played at Pro Tour New Orleans back in who knows how long ago, 2002, something like that, that uh, Kai Buddha ultimately ended up winning. And uh, it was their anti combo card. If you reanimated a, a Croesus the Purger and got one hit in, you could make your opponent discard their entire hand, and generally it was impossible to win from there. But uh, that was not so for Kai Buda, who in fact managed to top deck Illusions of, of Grandeur, followed by Donate, uh, to beat Croesus the Purger, hitting him against Darwin Castle in the, uh, in the top eight. Another uh, key card in their deck was Zombie Infestation. Zombie Infestation is good in a reanimator deck because it allows you to uh, get your creature cards into the, into the graveyard uh, from your hand, as well as if you have some other cards that allow you to recur things. They had uh, Krovik and Horror in that deck, as well as Squee, Goblin, Nabob, to allow them to make uh, an endless stream of zombies. So, Sphinx of the Steel Wind, this is a, uh, a major feature in a lot of the current Legacy Reanimator decks, because it offers a way for the, uh, the deck to just get out of range of burn spells and to you know, defend itself against any creature attacks. What else we got here? Reanimate, the, the biggest and baddest of reanimation effects because it is the cheapest. Uh, Reanimate is a major player, again, in legacy uh, reanimator decks. It's, uh, it can be a little dangerous because you do lose life equal to the, the cost of the creature that you put back into play, but for a single mana, bringing a, a Sphinx of the Steel Wind or Curse of the Purge into play, that's a, that's a big game, as they say. And the best way to get them into, into your graveyard is Entomb. Entomb, this is a, a shiny, sweet little Entomb here. Uh, Entomb was a, a very, very expensive card uh, going into the, the printing of Graveborn, so it'll be a, a good way for people to get, get their hands on a copy of it. And uh, this is a key card in the Reanimator decks because you can get exactly the fatty of your choice. You know, you, you Entomb, you get, you know, say you're playing as a combo deck, you just go get Croesus, reanimate right into play. So it's a, a great sort of pseudo-tutor that combines with your reanimation effects to get whatever you want. And uh, this one is a, a particular uh, favorite of mine, Buried Alive. This was a key card in a lot of decks years and years ago. I think I remember 1997. See, I'm, I'm very, very old. I was playing in the, the US, uh, US Open uh, in 1997 with Buried Alive. It's actually, I didn't end up playing in the Open. I played it in Nationals. Um, Buried Alive was a, was a strategy back then with Ashen Ghouls and Nether Spirits that uh, you could get around a lot of the control decks, Wrath of Gods and stuff. It's sort of like the Moreland Haunt <laughs> way back then. We had, to, we had to dig deep for those sort of things. But uh, Buried Alive in uh, current reanimator decks is a way to get multiple fatties into your, into your graveyard so you have your, your choice of what you want. And then, of course, the sweet spin down lot die with uh, a skull on it. So, very grave-like. And then, not only are all the cards in this deck foil, but even the deck box is foil. Look at this, shiny. With the reanimate art in the front, let's see what else is inside. Two little packs here. So we have a, I think this is a, a rules insert telling us what's going on. We're gonna, we're gonna ignore that for now. That's not all that exciting. But we do have some more cards to look at. Starting with a couple of Putrid Imps. So Putrid Imp, this is a, uh, a card that even now is a mainstay in uh, Dredge decks. It's a cheap way to get your uh, your big creatures into your discard pile, and uh, it's this deck actually manages to play mono black. We see there's only swamps in here. A lot of the current legacy versions are, are blue black, so they can play stuff like Careful Study. But uh, but Putrid Imp it lets you stay mono black, so you don't have to worry about anything with dual lands, vulnerability to wasteland or anything, and uh, can get the the cards into your into your yard pretty quickly. Now Hidden Horror. This is one of the, the these cards that up front that we actually skipped over a little bit. Hidden Horror is, is actually a sort of dual purpose card. 
it has what uh, was originally intended as a drawback on the card. So when it enters the battlefield, you have to sacrifice it unless you discard a creature card. And uh, it, it's a 4-4 creature for 3. So that's a, that's a pretty big guy. And uh, the, the drawback there, though, in a deck that's trying to get creatures into the discard pile, that, uh, that's actually quite the benefit. So you can play your guy, your hidden horror, get your fatty into the yard, and you have a big body to, uh, to start the game off with. So let's see what else we got. Faceless Butcher. This was uh, one of the iconic creatures of tor the Torment era. It was, uh, it was actually particularly potent because that was back when Call of the Herd was a big deal. And being able to Faceless Butcher your opponent's Call of the Herd t tokens and get rid of them was, uh, was pretty impressive. This is, for those of you who are uh, newer players, this is basically Fiend Hunter <laughs> of yesteryear. So a little more expensive, a little bigger, but pretty much the same card. Uh, Twisted Abomination. This is a, a card with another dual purpose in the deck. Uh, it, it has Swamp Cycling, so it can fix your mana, but it's also a, a fat creature, so you can go get your Swamp, then reanimate this guy into play if you want. Now here, now we get to the, the classic reanimation targets. Verdant Force was really the first big reanimation target. Uh, and you, know, you, you, you compare it to a lot of the stuff that you have nowadays, it's a little less impressive, but it's, it's really a classic, so I, I understand why they have it in here. So you, you have a Verdant Force uh, in your discard pile, you reanimate it, and you start getting a Sapperling army every turn. So I actually remember uh, Protor, was it Houston? Uh, when Bob Maher was playing the, the Angry Hermit deck, which was one of the sort of reanimator decks of yesteryear. And uh, his opponent, playing his very first Pro Tour, he, uh, he, uh, he loses the die roll, Bob goes first, plays land, Mox Diamond, Hermit Druid, and next turn just, oh no, it was, it was land, Mox Diamond, and Tomb, reanimate, Burden Force. So it was actually the, the, the very first, his very first game in the Pro Tour, very first time he ever sat down, playing against a future Hall of Famer and has a Verdant Force in play against him on turn one. So it's kind of a rough spot to be in. <laughs> then uh, another big green fatty that you can reanimate. This guy is more of a modern Kai, uh, Terastodon. Terastodon is a great way to deal with problematic things that your opponent might, might cast. Say they have a Jace the Mind Sculptor in play. If you're going to reanimate something, a lot of your other targets are just going to get bounced by Jace. Not so with Terastodon because you, if you reanimate the Terastodon, you can use its ability to kill your opponent's Jace and give them an elephant instead. It's also pretty good because you have the ability to kill not only their permanents but your own. So if you reanimate your Trastodon and your opponent has something that can, that can maybe kill one of your creatures, you can give yourself an army of elephants and you can kill them from there. Blazing Icon is more of the defensive reanimation target. So say five, six flyer, creatures can't attack you. Now there's no way that you're actually gonna cast this, much like the green fatties. Uh, it's, you know, nine cost, triple white, your deck can't even produce non-black mana. But uh, if you're playing against a creature deck, it's pretty difficult for them to beat you when this comes into play. Now for the control decks, this is what you want. Inkwell Leviathan, Island Walk, Trample, Shroud, 7-11. So this guy is not only huge, but essentially unblockable against many opponents. And uh, he can't be targeted by anything like Swords to Plowshares, Path to Exile. So if your opponent's playing a deck that can actually kill your creatures, this is maybe the guy you want to get. Then we have the Disruption Suite. We have Duresses here. There's got to be some more. We have Last Rites. Now this is the, the stuff that you use to protect your, uh, your, your reanimation combo. So Duress, this is a card that has actually only recently left, uh, left standard, and this is a sweet foil version of it if you uh, check out that shine. So Duress you can use to get rid of your opponent's counter magic or anything they might be able to actually use to deal with your fatties. And then this is a, a, a card that uh, was again in some of the many, many years ago reanimator decks, Last Rites. It's another dual purpose card. Uh, it lets you discard any number of cards from your hand to look at your opponent's hand and make them discard a non-land card for each card you discarded. So if you last rights your opponent, you can discard your fatties and then at the same time take out the cards that they were going to use to deal with them. So a very good card in Reanimator. Now this is a fun one, Animate Dead. The reason I say this is fun is because look at that wall of text. <laughs> Animate Dead used to be a very simple card, at least text-wise, but it just didn't work in Magic Rules when they, they changed the way some things work. So. This uh, is Enchant Creature Card in a Graveyard. When Animate Dead enters the battlefield, if it's on the battlefield, it loses Enchant Creature Card in a Graveyard and gains Enchant Creature put onto the battlefield with Animate Dead. Returning Enchant Creature Card to the battlefield under your control and attach Animate Dead to it. When Animate Dead leaves the battlefield, that creature controller sacrifices it. Enchanter Creature gets minus one, minus zero. <laughs> so uh, this new Graveborn version has sweet art and a, a wall of text that basically does the exact same thing it always has, but basically what you need to know you, you get something from your yard, put it into play. It's a little bit weaker, but it's still a fatty. Exhum. Exhum is an important card in the animation decks, not only because it's a reanimation effect that can save you the, the life that you'd otherwise lose from reanimate, but it also lets you play around things that are uh, graveyard removal. So let's say you have Exhum and your opponent has Surgical Extraction. If you play Exhum, 
they have to, and you, and you only have one fatty in your graveyard, they can surgical extraction your fatty and you're in trouble. But if you play Exhum and they go to surgical extraction your creature, you can entomb in response. If you can put a uh, fatty into your graveyard in response to that, because Exhum is not targeted, you actually still get it back. So important little trick to know. Sickening Dreams is sort of like the, uh, the last rites of uh, anti-creature cards. It allows you to discard cards to deal damage to each creature and player. So it lets you fill up your graveyard while protecting yourself. Good stuff. Another copy of Buried Alive, we saw that before. Diabolic Servitude. Diabolic Servitude is another one of these uh, reanimation effects, but it's, uh, it's a little more complicated. It actually, when it, when it goes away, you uh, uh, get the, rather when the creature goes away, you actually get the Diabolic Servitude back. And when it leaves, you actually get rid of the creature. So you, you can keep reanimating things, but you can't reanimate the same thing. You have to keep getting new guys into the yard. And then Dread Return is the, uh, the classic dredge reanimation effect. It's not really, you don't really have that many ways to utilize the flashback in this deck because there aren't that many things that put a multiple creature into play unless you do get the zombie infestation, which is stuck to that. <laughs> but uh, it's a, a forecasting cost reanimation effect. So as far as your efficient uh, reanimation goes, it's not the best, but it does have flashbacks. So you can use it more than once. Then we get to the land, a lot of sweet foil swamps, and then a couple of ways to uh, accelerate your reanimation, Crystal Vein and Ebon Stronghold, so both two mana lands that let you cast something like, say, a Dread Return a bit faster, and then Polluted Mire for a little bit of cycling. So there you have it. Premium deck series Graveborn. If you're looking to get, a, get your fatties into play from the graveyard, looking to go with some Innistrad flavor of brains, brains, this may be the deck for you.